I've come to decide that Limited Run Games is not a very good company. I'm sure that's inflammatory, but I do have this whole video here that I'm going to use to try to explain it. It's not any one thing. It's a lot of things. I've never really put much thought into this company, and I suspect most people haven't either. It's a thing that exists on the internet, selling stuff that I don't really buy, and that's about all it is, or at least all it was, until Tommy Tallarico decided to unveil the Intellivision Amico at the Crayola event in Pennsylvania. It was, by all accounts, quite a spectacle, and Ars Technica wrote an article that was fair but extremely critical. Tommy didn't respond well. Tommy Tallarico has a habit of not responding well, calling people all sorts of things and none of them very nice. He has a real PR problem and he has for a while. In this case, a couple of games industry people started tweeting about him, tweeting about this article, calling the Amico vaporware and calling out Tallarico's heavily politicized Twitter account. Tommy responded by calling one of them an untalented, jealous gatekeeping, which briefly showed up as trending in the video games category on Twitter, and I saw it. A few weeks prior, I had told my friend, The Golden Bolt, about the Amico event and suggested he might want to go, which, of course, he did not want to go. This tweet led us to start talking about the Amico event and how the Amico has one interesting thing. All games have to be complete. No patches, no updates, no DLC. This sounds really interesting from a game preservation standpoint. After all, when the Amico inevitably fails, there's a real shot that these games that are on it could be saved in playable states. Then, Bolt said to me, All game preservationists are scammers at the end of the day. This was somewhat of a shocking revelation because I'd always thought that people really liked Limited Run. I was very quickly disabused of this notion, but I left the conversation intent on exploring some of the issues people have with LRG. LRG is a company that makes physical copies of games, and it's not a small business. Their release of Scott Pilgrim alone sold at least $875,000 in the first three hours, and probably a lot more considering the KO edition, the collector's edition, was $105 more than the regular edition, and it sold out too. Plus, there was a PS4 edition that we don't know the sales numbers for. So needless to say, this is a company that made millions of dollars in a single day. It's not a mom and pop shop doing a couple hundred bucks a month. I went into this thinking that the biggest problem with LRG is the fact that their games are limited. If you want a physical version of a game that came out a while back, the worst possible thing is to find out that LRG published it, because that means the only way you're getting it is to pay at least double its value on eBay. And then I started researching. One of the more interesting chapters in Limited Run's life is a game called Revenge of the Bird King. You've probably never heard of this game, or if you have heard of it, you might be confused. See, Bird King is probably best known as that Switch game you bought for a penny one time, because it's a $5 indie game that has essentially never not been on sale. Nine cents, one cent, 40 cents. The price of this game is rarely over a dollar. This fits pretty well though, considering it's an incredibly poorly reviewed indie game, described with such words as forgettable, glitchy, and an annoying experience for sure. I'm sure that had it merely been, well, that, we'd be taking that first description of forgettable to its inevitable conclusion of forgotten, but there's a couple of snags. 
First, the background. This game was released on Switch and PS Vita digitally and was intended to be released on PS4 digitally as well. It was created by Joe, an LRG employee and developer, and then its digital PS4 release was cancelled. That could have been the end of the story, except somehow, in some way, Joe had personally commissioned a limited physical run of Bird King. And this limited physical run was now somehow being sold. There are quite a few distinct parts to this. First, why was the game pulled from digital release? Well, according to Joe, the physical edition was funded by an unnamed third-party investor who had gotten the physical edition printed for a, quote, stupid, silly promo release for an event that has since been cancelled. Since the event was cancelled, the digital release of the game was also cancelled. Why this matters is that Sony doesn't allow you to sell physical editions of games that aren't available on the PlayStation Store. They want every game you can buy physically to also be available digitally. That's just the way it is. That means that when the digital edition was cancelled, the physical edition could no longer be sold. That's part one. Part two is that Metal Jesus Rocks did a video on this physical edition, wherein he suggests that this might be the rarest physical edition edition release ever. He explains that he got two copies from Joe, but that there's essentially no other copies available because of the fact that the game just can't be sold. He talks it up, really lays it on thick, and then tells people they can send a DM to Joe on Twitter and maybe he'll sell them one too. Next thing you know, LRG tweets that their employee had put up an elusive copy of the game on eBay as a one-time physical sale with the benefits of the sale profiting the Video Game History Foundation. And then LRG holds a pop-up sales event in North Carolina. And who should be selling there but Joe and his box of Bird King physical copies? That's right, if you drive to North Carolina, you too! could buy a physical copy of the game directly from Joe at the Limited Run Games event for only $30 a pop or both variations of the cover, which is reversible, but you might not want to open it because it's such a collector's item now for only $60, which is just $30 twice. When people picked this up, they noticed that the back of the box didn't look like the early leaks of the box art. That box art had clearly shown that the physical copy was intended to be limited run games number zero 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 boy releasing an employee's random game as number zero 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 at a pop-up event sure would have been a stupid silly promo of course lrg was quick to mention that they didn't have anything to do with this physical release at all joe is just an employee and he's free to pursue his personal hobbies of course lrg is the publisher of the PS Vita version and the Switch version. And their website is listed on the physical version as the publisher. And they filed for the ESRB rating for a physical release. And they had an event they were hosting where it would make sense to release a 000 game as an end cap already planned. Let's recap. An LRG employee makes a seemingly unlicensed physical edition of a game that LRG didn't publish, but which was published by them on every other console. This is then pulled from digital release after an unnamed third-party investor pulled their support, which was intended to complement an in-person event with a funny physical release. This employee then gives two copies to Metal Jesus Rocks, who is friends with LRG, and who makes a video calling it the rarest PS4 game of all time, and then LRG promotes an eBay auction for the game with proceeds benefiting Metal Jesus Rocks's former collaborator. Then, a few weeks later, they sell a bunch of the physical editions at an LRG physical pop-up sales event, which sure sounds like a funny in-person an event to release the rumored 000 at. I mean, look, you can come to whatever conclusion you want from this, but if nothing else, 
This is incredibly incestuous, opaque, and dubious. The biggest reason behind limited run games has always been said to be preservation. They say they're trying to preserve video games in a physical state so that when, say, Nintendo shuts down the Switch eShop, it's going to happen one day, you will still be able to play some Switch games that weren't AAA enough to be released on a cartridge. Unfortunately, LRG does a lot of stuff that doesn't really fit into that preservation mindset. Here's a couple of examples in no particular order. LRG put out a No More Heroes Collector's Edition for $79.99, and it included the original soundtrack. However, after release, it was discovered that it actually included all the original soundtrack except for one song, Philistine from the second game. Sam and Max Save the World's release was a remastered version that had some jokes removed, and after discovery, LRG said, Y'all realize how many jokes are in Sam and Max, right? Complaining about four or five jokes being changed in a game that has literally thousands of jokes is a whole new level. Cosmic Star Heroin requires a downloaded patch before it can even be played. Scott Pilgrim, one of the largest launches that LRG ever did, doesn't have the Ubisoft DLC characters. LRG delayed Celeste by six plus months to get the DLC on the cartridge. They specifically pledged to preserve all parts of a game, except for Scott Pilgrim, apparently. None of this is particularly surprising if you look at why LRG exists. They were originally formed to sell their own game, from Mighty Rabbit Studios. Limited Run 001 is their game, Breach and Clear. They're not a game preservation company. They're a game seller, first and foremost. And this was their attempt at not going bankrupt after their games failed to sell. There's a lot of other companies, such as Strictly Limited, Super Rare, Special Reserve, and I Am 8-Bit, but Limited Run is the only one that actually wasn't started to preserve games. Having physical copies that are missing content have been retroactively changed, require a patch download, or are missing DLC means that you've preserved nothing. All the physical copy has done is give you less of a download for what is ultimately a pretty box for a digital version. Ultimately, the reason why people buy from Limited Run has little to do with the games themselves. Sure, there's a subset of customers who want to buy some specific game that LRG puts out, and there's another smaller subset that just wants to support game preservation. But the largest group of buyers amongst LRG's customers is collectors. And of course it is. I don't even think that's a surprising statement because who else would buy these? In every case, these are games that already exist in other forms, usually a lot cheaper and certainly a lot sooner. Why wait a year to play a game that costs four or five times as much? Collectors. Limited Run feeds off FOMO and obsession. That's fear of missing out, if you somehow hadn't heard that term before. And it's the same psychological trigger that drives people to panic buy toilet paper or milk. And it's used absolutely everywhere. Amazon uses it. Car manufacturers use it. Black Friday is the literal incarnation of FOMO marketing. This stuff is everywhere and it works. It works really well, but that doesn't mean it can't be incredibly predatory. Let me take a second here to clarify that I don't fault LRG for creating exclusive closed runs of games. I know there's a lot of people who are mad at the very concept of limited or exclusive printings, but that's not my concern here. Instead, my issue is with how they limit the products, 
how they artificially deflate the numbers, and how they release products piecemeal to exploitatively squeeze extra dollars per purchase. I think that last one is the easiest to grasp, so here's a couple of examples. LRG made a J and Silent Bob Mall Brawl NES cartridge, an admittedly pretty neat little toy if you're a fan of this game. A retro 8-bit side-scrolling brawler with couch co-op is exactly the kind of game that a limited edition NES port makes perfect sense for. It's the kind of product you actually want one of these super limited versions for. Yeah, you could buy it on Steam for $15, but with this collectible, you can play it on an NES. Super neat. But LRG couldn't stop there, no. They made three versions of the cartridge in three different colors of plastic. Gray, yellow, and green. And sold all three separately and as a zero discount bundle in order to hit those receptors in your brain that say you're missing out if you don't buy the same game three times. Blaster Master Zero 3 was a big release on Limited Run, and they also decided to do Blaster Master Zero 1 and 2 alongside it. However, rather than make 1 and 2 a single product, they make them two separate games. Now, this is only an issue for hardcore collectors. However, that's essentially LRG's entire user base. This is only made even worse when they decide to sell another artwork variation through Best Buy, or hold back unknown amounts of stock to sell on Fangamer well after the original sales period, or keep some mysterious percentage of stock available for in-person events. The argument here is usually some variation of, well, you don't have to buy them, or at least they're making physical versions of the games I want to play. Let's respond to those separately. First, if your only reasoning for why something predatory is okay is because it allows you to get what you want, that's pretty disingenuous, and I think you know why. Or maybe you don't, but that's even worse. Secondly, the problem with predatory practices is not that everyone falls for them. It's that some people fall for them really, really hard. There's a reason why mobile games are free, yet still make billions of dollars, and it's not because they can just not play them. I would bet dollars to donuts that just like any gotcha game, most of the revenue from LRG comes from what in any other world would be called whales. When your primary customer base is people literally obsessed and over-invested buying everything you have without question? Well, that's not exactly a wholesome approach, is it? The fact is that if LRG were all about preservation instead of just pure profit off the backs of the obsessed, they wouldn't exploit their own customers with systems like this. I'm not even delving into the warped concept of a collector's edition of their limited games, a limited run of a limited run designed exclusively to extract more cash from those collector-minded customers. Now, not not only are they hooking into your need to collect them all, they're insidiously digging deeper with a limited edition of a game that's already supposedly limited. If you're a big fan of retro Sega games, you're probably really enjoying the renaissance of Sega mini consoles. The Genesis Mini came out for $80 and it was fantastic. 42 games that people really wanted, a smart UI, good quality quality and easy to use. The Game Gear Micro is a series of ridiculous 1.15 inch tall handhelds with only four games each, but costing about $50. The Astro City Mini is sort of the in-betweener here, with 37 games that aren't exactly well known, but still have a solid fan base. Games like Alex Kidd, Dark Edge, Puyo Puyo, Shadow Dancer, and Wonder Boy. It's a solid little toy, something fans would no doubt really enjoy, but it's a bit more expensive, at $120. Unless you buy it from LRG, in which case it's actually $129.99. Now, what is that extra $9.99 for? Well, the packaging 
is in English. Also, the games are in English, according to LRG. If you're a big enough fan, you probably realize a lot of those games are Japanese with only English menus or even completely untranslated. So this $9.99 makes a lot of sense. It allows you to buy the games in English the first time even for a lot of the games in the group. So you go to buy this and then you see it says localized English packaging for the U.S. market and only 3,500 units have been manufactured in English packaging for the U.S. market. It says English and it's limited. It's going to sell out soon. You need to hurry or you won't get it. So you plunk down your $129.99. Maybe you even buy the $39.99 style kit that lets you turn it into a piggy bank. That's even more exclusive. Only 150 of those. Maybe later you tell some people about the English games and they're confused. It doesn't say the games are in English. It says the packaging. So you go to find that tweet where LRG confirms the games are in English and you can't find it. You look and look and can't find it because it's been deleted. That's right. One day before going on sale, LRG deletes the tweet that says the games will be in English. It really is just the box. You're paying $9.99 more for an English printed box. You could literally buy it at Amazon from Sega Toys instead of buying it from Limited Run and get a better price. And the only difference is that the box wouldn't be in English. There is a conspiracy about Limited Run and I explored that conspiracy because frankly it sounds entirely possible. I spent dozens of hours investing investigating, cross-referencing, looking through financial documents, talking to people. So I think I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on. First, I'll tell you the conspiracy. Limited Run holds back a significant portion of their stock and then sells it themselves on eBay after artificially inflating the price. After all, so many of their games end up on eBay, and it's really hard to imagine that everyone who buys a copy on day one is a scalper. On top of that, games show up on eBay before they're even released by Limited Run. There's got to be something behind it, right? This is a company that profits from FOMO, intentionally making the bare minimum amount of a product so that it sells out in seconds, a process that leaves many real collectors having to buy from eBay at inflated prices if they want to get a copy. This encourages scalping and only harms consumers. The games can sell out in two minutes, encouraging bots, and are set during hours that aren't internationally friendly. 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern, and always on a Friday. It's gotta be frustrating to be one of the many gamers who goes to buy one of these Funko Pops, only to miss the sale and then see dozens or hundreds of copies pop up on eBay for twice the price. It's not hard to see how seeing this happen so frequently, you might be led to believe that Limited Run was itself partaking in the profits. I spent untold hours investigating this. I compiled a list of every current and recent past employee of Limited Run, including close associates. I cross-referenced every sale of every Limited Run game on eBay based on a hundred mile radius of the office location in North Carolina. And I found absolutely no one who worked or was otherwise associated with Limited Run selling any of their games on eBay except two. I then spent quite a lot of time looking into these two people. One of them works for a major game developer nearby, and after all of this, I've decided that he's just a fan with too much money who buys without thinking and then ends up with multiple copies. However, the second person, well, they are associated with Limited Run. Very closely, in fact, and it led me down a different path. 
Let's talk for just a moment about how limited run parcels out their limited quantities of games. First, there are order minimums for licensing from Sony and Nintendo. Sony requires you to print 1,000 copies of a PS4 or PS5 game and 1,500 Vita copies. Nintendo requires you to order in 2,500 unit allotments. This means that typically the orders will be in some multiple of these, 1,000, 2,500, 5,000, etc. Let's just assume a 1,000 unit order and you can extrapolate out from there. Right off the top, Limited Run is holding, let's say, around 10% for returns and faulty copies. They have a notoriously high failure rate and eventually they will usually agree to send you a new copy if the first one doesn't arrive in a working order. Then they hold back another 15% for in-person convention booths pop-up shops, and the like, so 150 copies, and they'll combine this with any returns left over. Then, they hold copies for their trusted partners. There are 89 non-Best Buy GameStop fan gamer partners. Let's assume each one gets one to two of each variant. I've seen photos that show, for example, that the partner received all three Metal Slug variants and multiple copies of several releases. Rounding that, let's just say 15%. We're already down to 600 copies, which they then split into two groups for the morning and evening sales. So the first group that sells is going to get 300 copies. They've hinted in their FAQ that the ratio is something like five to one buyers the product already, but it's actually closer to 16 to one once you take out the held copies. Then they ship those copies to their trusted partners. And this is where we circle back because the person I found was one of those trusted partners. I started doing some more checking and the largest and most frequent eBay sellers of limited run games are almost without fail someone included in the limited run partner program. They ship these copies to their retail partners and those partners on average add $20 per game and much, much more for the most sought after collector's edition, sometimes hundreds of dollars more. Limited Run is not exactly free with their policy on partners, but from what I've been able to find after talking to some of them is that there's a loose two partners per state policy so everyone's reasonably spread out, and then those partners are given a first buy opportunity at the regular going price. They pay the same price we all pay, but they get theirs guaranteed. No lottery, no hoping to get the cart to load, none of the normal stuff we have to go through. This means that Limited Run is limiting stock for legitimate consumers while sloughing off inventory to what are essentially legitimized scalpers. Those partners put the games up on eBay at astronomic prices, scalping you because they are enabled to do so by Limited Run themselves. Then Limited Run has the gall to take their games to physical conventions and sell them there to a frenzy of people thinking that 1,000 copies sold in five seconds instead of 300. It's not illegal, it's just scummy. You've heard of Among Us. You know what kind of game it is, and frankly, you're probably all sussy bock it out by now. It's on Steam, it's on Epic, it's on Google Play, it's on iOS, it's on the Switch, it's on the Game Pass, it's coming to PS5, it's everywhere. Among Us is the world's most popular game of all time. It had 500 million unique monthly players. It's one best mobile game, best multiplayer game. It's a pretty big success. LRG announced a physical collector's edition for Among Us. Perhaps that's confusing to you because Among Us is a game that requires you to play online with others and has updates and things like that, and you can't really update a physical edition. Well, don't worry, LRG has you covered. They're not including a physical version of the game at all. The $80 collector's edition instead 
comes with a download code for Steam or Epic. Sure, there's a disc, but that disc has concept art on it. Oh, there's a second disc as well. It has music on it. They couldn't possibly have included a physical version of the game. And why? Well, there's DRM involved. And everyone knows you can't include a video game on a disc if there's DRM. In order to add a little bit of FOMO to this order, they also offered up Among Us exclusive plushies. Only 500 of them for $19. $19.99, so you can put that next to your box of physical non-game items while playing your game on Steam. Random point here, but Limited Run Games sent out this tweet not too long ago using their motto, Forever Physical. Perhaps you heard me mention that you could pick up a game at Best Buy as well. Not just any game, of course, but limited run games with unique covers. Yes, with any order that you buy, you might find that your super rare, ultra valuable, soon to be worth a mint game is actually just one of 25,000 copies which aren't even going to sell out and will slowly be marked down and down until they're bundled with old consoles. This means means limited is a bit of a misnomer, but at least it's still somewhat accurate. Until you take into account that many of LRG's products have lengthy pre-order periods, meaning anyone can buy it and be guaranteed a copy, or a thousand copies. There's no limits on these sales at all, so you could buy hundreds or thousands of copies. Now you're buying into this limited product that has no limits, at all. But at least once they're sold out, you'll have something rare. Except, no, of course not, or I wouldn't have even said such a thing. No, with games like Wonder Boy, Dragon's Trap, and Streets of Rage 4, the publisher just went and printed more physical products and sold them on their own. With the Streets of Rage 4 version, the LRG version was delayed for so long that by the time the LRG version actually shipped to people who had pre-ordered it, another physical edition was already out, and it was cheaper, and it had a better cover. One especially egregious example is the Doom helmet, which was originally limited to just 4,000 helmets. It didn't include a game, just a physical helmet, the essence of what these collector packs really are, just the fluff. And then, after selling out, it showed up on Bethesda's website for sale with an extra 20,000 helmets. It's still available for sale, so you can just go buy one. Well, at least Limited Run won't reprint any of them, except also no. While they've never done any egregious reprint, Printing, they did re-release a previous game on a new console. Oddworld New and Tasty was sold ages ago on PS4, and they recently reissued it, but this time on PS3. Same physical edition, different code in the box. With Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, Limited Run priced their version at $60, only for the publisher to release a different physical edition, which included all of the DLC, the Limited Run version, didn't have for $30 a few months later. I'd already recorded that part, but every single time I look, I find something new about this company. I'd said they hadn't just straight up reprinted a product, but then they did. With Hunt Down, the collector's edition was reprinted and resold. An additional 1,800 copies for a second printing. Now, Limited Run immediately went into damage control mode, saying our distribution titles are always subject to having further runs as those games are not directly printed by us. Come on, this is at best a weak excuse. Somehow, it's now acceptable for them to reprint games without making that really clear when you're buying the game. Hunt Down still has the Limited Run logo on the box. It was still sold on the Limited run website. It was still a limited run collector's edition that people lined up to buy, expecting it to be, you know, a limited run. 
And it wasn't. I'm all for people being able to pick up the game, honestly. I think I stand pretty firmly on the side of if there's enough copies for everyone, that's a benefit for all the people who want to buy one. However, it does stand in pretty stark contradiction to what limited run is supposed to mean. Most importantly, however, it means that these games aren't rare, aren't valuable, and could be reprinted at any time in the future by any number of companies, meaning it's not even an investment. LRG's customer service is apparently trash. Scroll through Trustpilot or the BBB, two websites designed to provide a semi-impartial rating for consumers to know how good a company is at dealing with customers. And you'll find a whole lot of unanswered complaints. There's the normal I did something bad and they caught me kind of posts, but a worrying majority of the complaints posted are actually about the customer service. See, LRG's entire business revolves around you sitting happily on your hands while they take however long they want to send you the product. We're not talking Amazon times here. You're not getting anything tomorrow. The wait time for an LRG release is always months, but sometimes it can be years. LRG has stated many times that they focus on shipping bigger titles and games with the largest quantities sold, they prioritize their releases. That's fine. In fact, it makes a lot of sense, but it also means that they're selling unfinished products that have no firm timeline and only after you buy it, will they even start to work on the product? And if the game you buy doesn't sell gangbusters, well, they often push lower priority games back quite a lot. There's a game called Five Dates that was a very small order, and it kept getting pushed back again and again and again, and it looks like some customers waited over a year to get it. And when you get it, well, that's where the second largest group of complaints comes from. See, the shipping is, well, trash. LRG is based in the US, so a huge amount of customers are international. Limited run is notoriously bad for international shipping, just period. The costs, the customs, the shipping times, and the lack of care in the packaging just to make international shipping so bad that honestly, it's not worth it even if you are a fan. Domestically, though, it's not exactly better. You'll often receive your very limited, super rare collectible in a bubble wrapper that's a quarter inch thin. If you've ever sent something fragile in the mail, you'll understand immediately how that's not going to do much of anything to protect the game. The games arrive damaged very frequently. LRG's response to this was to introduce a box that you have to pay for. Unless, of course, you buy more games, then they'll give it to you for free. They literally nickel and dime you $2 for a box. It's so incredibly scummy. This, of all the things, man, does this make me angry. And I can't help but think that somehow they're charging a profit on the box. Just such absolute baloney. Combine this with the fact that LRG won't combine orders unless you buy them all at the same time, obviously an impossibility for a new release, add in the staggered release schedule, and you've got a perfect storm for increasing shipping costs pretty astronomically. But let's say you get your product and maybe it's damaged in the shipping. Well, luckily for you, that's where those complaints come in because LRG does basically nothing for you. Without fail, it seems, the customer service representatives will blame you, deny responsibility, and refuse to assist. So you're stuck with the product. Well, it's just a broken case, right? No, because LRG also manages to pretty regularly send out products with significant printing errors. Flint Hook, Kingdom New Lands, Mercenary Kings, and more were shipped out with pretty significant errors for what's supposed to be a best-in-class collectible. To remind you, these are not just off-the-shelf game copies. They are marketed as limited and rare. 
Mercenary Kings doesn't even have the same ESRB rating on all of its different pieces. Flint Hook's entire back cover is just blank because someone toggled off the words before printing and nobody caught this until it arrived at customers' homes. So you complain. Well, there's two problems with that. First, as is depressingly common with these kind of companies, Limited Run forces you to agree to a mandatory arbitration with every sale. You agree when you buy their games to never sue in a court, never join a class action, that you'll speak English, that you'll never disclose what happens, that you'll pay for the arbitration yourself, that you won't get any lawyer's fees returned to you, and that you waive your right to a jury. Mandatory arbitration is shockingly legal and regular, and you will not be able to fight this, unless Limited Run engages in some sort of fraud that invalidates the arbitration clause. You have no recourse, none, when Limited Run doesn't keep up their end of the bargain. Well, except one. You can issue a chargeback and explain to Visa or Discover or your bank how these guys aren't keeping up with their contract. You bought something, they didn't send what you bought, so you want your money back. If your cardholder agrees, which isn't a guarantee, you did sign a contract, and there's absolutely no cooling off period for online purchases, but if they agree, you'll get your money money back. And Limited Run will ban you from their website forever. They will blacklist you, blacklist your address, blacklist your name. The only way to protect yourself as a customer when Limited Run doesn't meet their obligations is to take actions that will end your ability to shop with them ever again. How is that customer support? They charge you up front, hold on to your money for upwards of a year, and then finally ship out your item. And when they screw up your shipment, they take months to correct it, or they ban you and refund all of your purchases and just sell it off to some other schmuck. Shantae is a hugely popular way forward series with five games that are beloved by their fans. LRG has released these games on Switch, Game Boy Color, and PS4 as a physical release already, and from all accounts, people are pretty happy with those. This led LRG to announce a PS5 version. You can get a regular physical edition of this for $29.99, which includes the physical game and a manual. The digital version sells for $9.99. Or you can buy the collector's edition for $79.99. This collector's edition includes a bunch of random stuff, a manual, a steel book, some pins and a keychain, a poster, and an acrylic standee, a little acrylic cutout of Shantae from the game. There will be five of these collector's editions, one for each game, and each one will include this little acrylic standee. We know this because there's a statue that LRG has been promoting. We don't know what it will look like. We have no idea what the size is. We don't know anything about it, but we do know that it has five little slots on its base so that you can plug in your acrylic standee and it will light up. Now, they're selling a collector's box for each of the Shantae games. They've only sold two of the games so far, meaning if you want the full set with the acrylic standees, you have to buy now and keep tabs on their site for the next year to get the other three games. That's five $79.99 collector's editions for a total of $399.95 that includes five standees you can only use if you also buy the probably $200 statue at the end of all of it so you can plug them all together. Imagine being the guy who buys the statue but didn't buy or couldn't get the collector's edition with the standees. You're going to have a statue that's incomplete for Forever. Imagine buying a collector's edition for $80 and then being told, hey, this part of the thing you bought is for this other thing if you buy it. Also buy all the rest of them. Hey, and while you're there, pick up the $74.99 skateboard deck and the trading card set and the hoodie and the stickers and the separately colored steel books and then slip covers. It's beyond milking. It's frankly 
pretty gross. There are two other things that just kind of bother me, and I couldn't really figure out where to fit them in, but I wanted to be reasonably comprehensive, and after asking some friends and Brody, the editor, he agreed that this was bad enough that I couldn't justify not including it. So here's my two issues. I understand if you think they are minor. First, Limited Run actively solicits Twitch subscribers. That's really weird to me. Not only do they allow viewers on the Twitch streams to subscribe at all, something a lot of corporate accounts simply don't enable in the first place, but they actively encourage it as a, quote, way to support the stream as we continue our path to partner. They provide colored names and roles on their Discord. They even do subscriber-only streams, where if you're not subscribed, you can't watch the stream, further soliciting payments. It's sort of gross, is it not, for a company that is selling you something to also take your money for free? Their live streams are literally ads. Literally, here's a game we sell that you can buy. Followed by, also, please donate. It just feels gross. Secondly, and I bring this up because it turns out this is a fairly common misunderstanding, but Limited Run artificially inflates the value of their games by artificially lowering the issue number. See, you have Breach and Clear as number 001, but you also have Cthulhu Saves Christmas as number 001, and also Thimbleweed Park as number Number zero zero one. This is because they cleverly, or perhaps cunningly, or connivingly, restart their numbers every console. New console, new numbers. And so instead of being number 386, it's number zero zero one. This also feels kind of gross. And I know I said two more things that bother me, but then there were more things. And I'm confident now that no matter how many times I go to revise this video, there's going to be one more thing that comes out. It's just all deleted or fairly minor or otherwise gets swept under the rug and no one really puts together how pervasive and downright systemic the amount of weird or abusive or unprofessional limited run can be. So here's another couple of things. Now, this one, this is just weird. I wasn't even going to talk about it at all until I had to sit down and record more audio to talk about the next thing. But way forward, the game publisher, their official Discord presence is the limited run Discord. They have their own rooms. They have hoisted roles. They have separate rules for their Discord enclave. Sure, this doesn't really say anything specific about LRG, but it's just so weird how incredibly incestuous these companies can be. Imagine if Insomniac Games had a section inside of Walmart that was a store that only sold Insomniac Games, had its own return policy, and was staffed by Insomniac employees. It's kind of weird, right? And it obviously serves more to bring customers to Walmart than it does to provide a good experience to Insomniac fans. Well, that's here, too, and it's just very, very strange. Way forward, guys. I'll make you a Discord if you want. It's free. I run several with tens of thousands of members. You could have it in less than an hour, I promise. In fact, I've already done it, and it's yours, completely free, ready to go. It's identical to your current presence on Limited Run, but completely yours. And I'll teach you how to run it. I'll provide tutoring on the permissions to your admin. I'll give you guys a couple of weeks of support, and I'll help you submit to Discord to become a verified game server. DM me on Twitter. Now, on to the other issue, which is the abusive, unprofessional side, and very much about LRG specifically. This tweet was sent out today, as I'm writing this addendum, and I thought for a second that somehow this script 
had been leaked, right? Like that could be a response to this video. It's not though, it's a response to something else. Before I go over that, I just want to point out a weird statement here. LRG says they've paid out over $80 million and only take 20%. So that's $20 million or so in six years. I don't know about you, but an average $3 million a year in gross profit might not be build a rocket to space kind of money, but it's also not chump change. LRG tried to hand wave this by saying that the CEO's salary is commensurate with other employees, but Elon Musk's salary is $0 because salary isn't how CEOs are compensated. Direct stock ownership, annual incentive bonuses, perquisites, colloquially known as perks, like private planes, company travel, expense accounts, a shiny golden bathroom, and yes, even severance packages, the golden parachute that means even if you mess up and get fired, you're still going to land on your feet. Literally none of these are part of your salary, but they represent a huge amount of value that goes directly into the pocket of a CEO over a basic employee. I'm sure Limited Run doesn't have their own fleet of G5s, but that doesn't mean their CEO's total compensation is just a weekly direct deposit. But what was he complaining about? Well, you see, it turns out that Limited Run lied to their customers and pulled a bait and switch. Shiren the Wanderer got a collector's edition on PC, and it comes with an art book, a couple of prints, some dice, a stress ball, and the physical game in a little jewel case. Except no, it doesn't. They lied. See, if you bought the collector's edition of Shiren the Wanderer, you didn't get a nice little jewel case. You got a Steam code. You bought Shiren the Wanderer on physical disc for the PC, and you got a piece of paper with a Steam code on it. Already, this is a pretty big mistake. Over $6,000 worth of purchases were made for this game, and after spending $75 on a physical edition of the game, the core premise of which is probably to preserve the game and not have to download a digital edition, you give your customers a Steam code without so much as an apology. No note that explains the issue, no email, nothing that says you made a mistake and you're working to fix it. Just a Twitter message, if someone happens to find it at all. This is the worst kind of customer support because LRG knows they did something wrong here. They know that they have failed to provide their customers with the product that they bought, and they just don't care. They'll handle it in the ephemeral world of Twitter, where they can delete a reply if they have to. Well, one customer decided to follow up and see how LRG would, quote, make it right, and it turns out they'll happily provide a partial refund of $10. Yes, that's right, for giving you this Steam code instead of the physical copy you ordered, if you contact support and go through all the hassle of complaining, then and only then will they issue you a $10 refund. No, not every customer automatically gets a $10 refund, no, they won't send an email or explain, but if you're annoyed enough to complain, then they'll offer you $10 back. 65 bucks for a Steam code. I wish I could say it ends there, but Douglas Bogart, the co-owner of Limited Run, he wanted to make his opinion pretty clear. Customers shouldn't complain. They don't have the right to complain because LRG is already providing so much content at such an affordable price that to complain is frankly heretical. Imagine subtweeting a customer as the owner of a business sending out this tweet and snidely insulting your customers for wanting what they paid for. Don't worry though, it's just a tweet, so it can be deleted. Doug, by the way, well, he's something else. Dougie Baby thinks he's a superstar. That's why he sells his autograph to fans at in-person events. It's ridiculous all around, and frankly, a disgusting abuse of your customers, and one of the most unprofessional things I've seen since Twitch put porn on Ninja's channel. 
Don't worry, though. That CEO, he cleared everything up by saying that actually it was all about something else completely unrelated. And as we know, he would never lie to us. A lot of this comes down to why you're collecting this game at all. What drives you to pay for a fake collectible, artificially limited and artificially driven up in price with false rarity? Why would you do this? As many of you know, I sometimes like to delve into to the psychology of a thing. I think it helps us understand when we understand ourselves. Collection is actually an instinctive predilection, and there's lots of reasons why you might do it. Knowledge. Perhaps you're collecting because you want to learn or know things. Relaxation. You can find the act itself to be relaxing. There's people who collect something purely for the appreciation of beauty. There's the pride of ownership. You can feel proud to be the one who has this thing. Social interaction. You can interact with other collectors who also like this thing you like, and you can interact with the people behind the item you're collecting, the celebrities or businesses that made it. Competitive challenge. This is one gamers are very aware of, the competitive urge to collect them all. Recognition. Others will be awed by your awesome collection. Altruism. A lot of people collect things to donate them to museums. A desire to bring order. The want to put everything in its place. Perhaps it's a life goal. It gives you a purpose in life to collect. There's also the nostalgic connection to history, the feeling that you're part of the story. And finally, the diversification of wealth, such as art and jewelry. These are the reasons people collect, though most collectors will be an amalgamation, a combination of these reasons. Historically speaking, someone who collected rare or unique items would have greater wealth because they own rare things. Similarly, someone who held on to a lot of things would be more likely to succeed in different situations because they had the things they needed readily available. This got passed down. This behavior was cemented as something admirable and it became a common trait. Today, unfortunately, we are flooded with low-quality garbage, and our lizard brains don't really understand that it isn't valuable. We don't understand numbers very well, and our herd size is larger than ever before, so how rare something really is or isn't gets muddled and misunderstood. This compulsion to collect can become overwhelming, and for a lot of limited-run customers, it's exactly Exactly that. They have a compulsion. They need to collect these games. They are essentially video game merchandise hoarders. And if you think you might be, or you know someone who might be, it's fairly easy to identify. Can you clearly describe why you collect? What drives you to own these things. If you can't describe why you're doing it, it may not be a collection, it may be a hoard. This isn't unique either to humans or limited run games. Pack rats exist. That's not a term that was made up. It's an animal that steals and hoards things in its nest. Shells, pieces of glass, shiny plastic, and pretty rocks. Magpies steal jewelry and coins. And other companies have tapped into the fact that we share this foraging part of our brain with animals. Pokemon, G.I. Joe, Cabbage Patch Kids, Beanie Babies. All products that tapped into the meat and chemicals of our brains and made other people rich. You can even see it outside of tchotchkes, and it's become semi-regularly referred to as magpie culture. The magpies from earlier lending their name to the idea that we are flittery hoarders who can't shake off our primal instincts to collect, gathering the shiniest of toys and then hiding it in a closet where no one can see it. So after all of this, I just don't think that limited run is worth investing your money with. There's a lot of game preservation companies that could be but this just isn't one of them. Frankly, preservation hasn't even been a goal for limited run games since the Switch released. I originally intended to position this video as a sort of do better 
to shame Limited Run by exposing some shady, scummy things they did and then encourage them to do a better job, to service their mission statement and to service their customers. But after working on this for several weeks, I've come instead to the conclusion that none of this is a surprise to them. They single-handedly started the relentless limited print model, and I think they're pretty happy with that. It is so easy to find solutions to these problems, and it's not my job to do that, so I can't imagine that if it were my job to find solutions, I wouldn't have found them already. Stop charging for boxes for shipping. You're selling collectibles. Treat them that way. Institute a third-party or multiple-step quality control before printing thousands of copies of a game with errors. When you negotiate a timed physical exclusive with a publisher, tell customers what that window is so they don't get screwed when the publisher releases a different physical edition the day after your own sale has ended. Do some quality control with your partners. Set clear and transparent qualifications for when a game will be released. Will it include DLC or not? Will it require a patch or not? Will it just be a digital download code or not? Additionally, some serious consideration needs to go into how you treat your potentially addicted customers. The ethics of selling a rare game with a rarer version for a premium, plus the whole selling $1 games that were free on PS Plus for $40 thing. In fact, your selection of games overall should be a lot more transparent, or at least customer-focused. Games like Jack 3 already exist in the millions, physical copies, no less. So is that really the game that deserves to take up someone's entire expendable income for the month? Why isn't there a lottery? Graphics cards do this, Newegg does this, but Limited Run's idea of a perfect system is one where you have seconds to click and pray. Scalpers are the only people benefiting from this backward system of ordering during preset times of the day. And yet the solution wasn't to combat that, but to ignore it. There's too many variants and you're taking advantage of completionists. There's pointless trading cards intended to serve only as an extra hook to drive people to buy more. And yet only the owners will ever have a complete collection. Maybe you're the fraction of a fraction that refuses to buy digital. Okay, so Limited Run is the only way you can play some of these games without bending your morals to accept the digital future. You should be the most upset about this, because you're the one who gets shafted when a game won't launch without a patch. You're the one who gets spun out of the zeitgeist and can't engage in conversation with the rest of the world because you're two years behind everyone. You're the one paying a premium just to get deprioritized, and if you dare to complain, they're going to ban you. To bring it full circle, the guy who Tommy Tallarico was complaining about was Frank Cifaldi, the founder of the Video Game History Foundation. If not for that series of tweets, I never would have started looking into them, and then never would have started noticing a series of very concerning facts about a little old company called Limited Run Games. You can watch another video in the corner, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.